Sometimes you need to wait for data before displaying it inside your app. Everyone knows simple methods that return immediately data that you can display on the screen. Next to it we have a future return type which allows us to return this value later in the future. In this case, we want to wait for four seconds until we return this value. And finally, we want to display this future data. Therefore, we use a future builder. Inside of it, we place our future data and return a widget that displays the status of this future data. In our case, we need to wait for four seconds until the future completes and returns a value. This value that is returned, we can then access over the snapshot data. We also need to check if we have some data already returned, because most of the time we are actually waiting for the data and during this waiting time, the snapshot data is null. With this, if we hot restart the application, then we wait for four seconds and after this, the data is displayed in our app. Next to returning data, a future could also complete by throwing an error. This error message that is returned, we can then access over our snapshot error. And here we also need to make sure that we have an error. This time after hot restarting, we wait again for four seconds until the future completes. And after this, we display then the error message. Next, we look at a real case app scenario where we make a request to the server using the HTTP package and the server responds then after some time. So we need to wait for the server to respond. And then we get a result back with this random number or some data that we return from this function. And since the server takes some time to respond, therefore the return type is of type future. Also within the build method, we create a floating action button and if we press on it, then we call the set state method. A big problem right now is whenever you call the set state method, then the future task is restarted. So in our case, we make every time a new server request to get some new data when we call the set state method and this should not happen. To fix this, make sure to never call a method that returns a future within the build method. Instead, you pass here an instance of a future insight. This instance you create then within your state. And lastly, you initialize this future variable outside the build method. As a result, if we hot restart our app, then the future task is only called one single time and every set state method call after it doesn't restart the future task because here inside we don't call again a new future task with every build method call. For the case that you actively want to refresh your future, simply call again the get data method and put it into the same field that you place in your future builder and also make sure to call the set state to rebuild your UI. With this, every time if we click on this refresh button, then we make again a server request and refresh our data. Another big issue is if getting the data takes a bit longer, we simulate it by adding three seconds to our request. Then the problem is after we hot restart our application or in general start the app for the first time, we have this loading case for the first time. However, if we then refresh, then it takes again three seconds. However, we have no loading case and the data only changes abruptly. And this is because we have already some data and therefore he is always going into this case and is displaying the data that he has already and is never going into the waiting case. We will fix this later, but before it, let's also look at another case that we can also return a null value from our data. And therefore we also go here to the top and create a nullable field. If you now hot restart your application or start your app for the very first time in general, then you have this waiting case and it will always stay inside of it. It will never go away. And this is because we return this time as a data null. And here we basically check if the data is not null and therefore we are not going inside of this case. We are not going inside of this case. And therefore he will always go inside the else case and show this loading indicator. To fix both of these problems, we have the snapshot object that helps us. So as we learned, we can access the data of the snapshot or the snapshot error. And we also have a third case where we can access the connection status, which is the current status of our future. So as long as our future is not completed, we are going here inside and this is our waiting case. And when the future completes by returning some data or throwing an arrow, then we go inside the stun state. And in our case, we have then the same functionality as before. 
With this we have fixed both problems. First of all we go into the waiting case and since we return the null as the data, therefore we go into the else case where we display no data. And also the second problem is solved. So if we return this time some real data and then we click on the refresh button, then we also display the waiting case every time if we are refreshing our data. We also want to look at what happens until our future is completed, what happens with the data and error fields. So if we hot restart the application or start the application for the first time, then you see that both of the data fields and error fields are null. However, if we once loaded some data, in this case the number 93, and then we click on the refresh button, then you see that the 93 is preserved during the waiting case. The same works with an error, so this error message and error will be preserved if we click on this refresh button and exchange our future. You see we have this an error message still there inside during the waiting case. Also you could define some initial data in your future builder. And this means if you hot restart your application or start your application for the very first time, then you have access to this initial data within this snapshot data field. So all in all, instead of displaying the waiting case, if you have some initial data, you could also then decide that you display the initial data over the snapshot data. So if you hot restart your application, you can immediately display this initial data until the future is completed. And then this new value of 47 is going inside of our snapshot data field and the initial data is then simply overridden. Which means once you have loaded some data with your future builder and then you click on the refresh button, it will keep this 47, this old data that we had here before and then only loads the new data and it will not display this initial data again. How to listen to an endless stream of data and display it in your app. If your method is returning a future, then it can only return one single time a value. Instead use as a return type a stream and change this async to async asterisk. With this you cannot use the return keyword anymore to return a single value. Instead use the yield keyword and then you can also use it multiple times to change the value over time. Let's also display the stream in our UI. Therefore we create a stream builder and put our get number stream inside. First of all, the stream is waiting for four seconds and this is when we are in this connection state waiting. After this, we return our first value that we can then access over the snapshot data. And if a null value is returned, then we go into the else case. With this, if you start the application for the first time, then we wait for four seconds. And after this, we count one, two and three. A problem right now is if you have a floating action button that calls every time the set state method, then if we click on this floating action button, the set state method is called and the stream is restarting. And if I click again on this button, it restarts again the stream. And this is not what should happen with every set state call. To fix this, make sure that you never call within your build method a stream. Instead, put an instance variable inside and this number stream we want to create within our state and then outside of the build method, we initialize the stream. With this, if you start your app for the very first time, we wait and count one, two, and three. And now if we call the set state method by clicking on this floating action button, then the stream is not restarted again. And this is because we are not creating every time a new stream when we are rebuilding our widgets. In case you want to refresh your stream, then create again a new stream and place it inside of this number stream that we also placed within the stream builder and make sure to call the set state to update your UI. With this, if we click on this refresh button, it is restarting the stream and you can also restart the stream multiple times if you like. Next, inside your stream, you could also throw an error. Notice that everything after it is not executed then anymore. And lastly, we want to display this error message then within our UI Inside of our stream builder, we can check if we have a snapshot error. This time after waiting for four seconds, then we display this error message. And finally, to have full control over your stream, you can use the connection state. The connection state is none if the stream is null. The connection state is waiting until you get the first value returned by the stream. 
The connection state is active once we receive the first value from the stream and the stream is not yet finished. And the connection state is done if the stream has finished and when nothing is anymore executed within this method. With this, if our stream starts for the first time, it is waiting. After it, it goes then into the active case. And lastly, it is going to the done case if the last value was emitted and our stream is closed. Sometimes you need to wait for data before you can use it in your app. Let's start with the button that executes three tasks. The second task should be asynchronous. So we want to request some weather data from a server. This data we cannot get immediately, instead we have to wait for it and make a network request. We simulate this request to the server by waiting for 3 seconds and after it we return this result. With this, if I click on this button, task 1 and 3 are executed immediately and after 3 seconds we also get this weather response. Now let's say the task 3 requires this weather result to accomplish its task. However, the weather result takes 3 seconds and before that we have already executed task 1 and task 3. Therefore, we need to wait for the second task to complete before we go over to the third task. And for doing this, you can simply await this future. And in your function header, you need to add the async keyword. With this, if we click this time on this button, the first task is executed. After 3 seconds, we execute the second task and we wait for this task to finish. After this task is finished, we continue with the third task. Next, we could also return this weather data after the future has completed and then it is going inside of this weather field that we can then use for the third task. Let's click again on this button. The first task is executed and also the second task to get the weather, which is then returned and is going into our third task. Next, we want to place this code that takes 3 seconds to execute into a separate getData method. Inside of this method, we are not returning this value right now. Instead, we wait for 3 seconds and after this, we return this value. And since we wait for 3 seconds, you need to add the async keyword to your method. And also the return type changes then to a future of type string. Let's again get our weather data. First of all, we execute the first task, then the second task, and we get our weather. This time it prints for the weather instance of future string. And this is because we return a future of type string. So this value we don't get right now, we get in the future. And since we get it in the future, we also need to await this data. With this, if I click again on this get data button, then the first task is executed, the third task, and we get again the right weather data that we have returned from this function. 